Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Anonymous, a big one paragraph of text. <laughs> one long paragraph. Okay. I recently came across your podcast and have found it to be extremely beneficial when it comes to dissecting the LSAT. I was hoping you could give me some advice when it comes to overcoming a poor semester. I had a 3.8 GPA throughout my freshman and sophomore years. Then I decided to transfer to another school for my junior year. My mother died tragically from a brain bleed, dear God, four weeks before I started at my new university and I ended up receiving four Fs that school year, which led to me getting kicked out of the university. Oh, I eventually man. reached out and got help and then re-enrolled. The following semester, I took 18 credit hours and got a 4.0. I'm currently on track to end up with a 3.3 GPA, regardless of the Fs, but I'm concerned that this GPA will reflect poorly on my work ethic. Will an addendum actually help my GPA situation at all? If not, then I hope to rely on the LSAT, as you guys have made it clear that this is the ultimate, quote, wrecking ball. After taking my first diagnostic, I received a 153. Nice. Though... Comma, this was under 35 minute conditions, even though I'm allowed 50 minutes per section due to accommodations. <laughs> okay. So you should do even better. Yeah, I think you should end up in the 170s, honestly. I mean, 153 is a great diagnostic. And if you're also going to get extra time, I mean, that's just like straight up unfair. Um, unfair in your favor. So good. After two weeks of reviewing logic games, I decided to take another practice test with the 50 minute time limit. I ended up scoring a 165. Yeah, I mean, no shit. <laughs> like you have talent as indicated by your 153 cold diagnostic. I'm not surprised at all that you can score 10 points higher when you have <laughs> time and a half. I plan to take my official test in August as I feel five months of studying is enough time for me to master this test. I don't give a shit what you feel. There's no point. Keep see taking what practice happens. tests yeah. and see what happens and then decide when you're going to officially take the test. Yeah, don't preemptively decide that. Um, hmm. Okay. Do you think I will be able to get a full ride to a top 25 law school if I score a 175 or above, considering that I had one awful year in school? Will an admissions council actually take my addendum into account? I appreciate all you guys do for aspiring law students. Best regards, Anonymous. Ben, what does our scholarship estimator say about a 175 3.3? Uh, let's take a look. Go to lsatdemon.com forward slash scholarships. It's one of the most important things you could do if you're even at the beginning stages of thinking about law school, you should be playing around with our scholarship estimator because like thinking about law school in a vacuum makes no sense. You have to think about law school relative to the price they're going to charge, right? Like you don't, you don't make a purchase without knowing the price. Well, you don't know the price if you don't look at the scholarship estimator. So LSATdemon.com forward slash scholarships. Does a 175 3.3 get any full rides in the top 25? Yeah, there is one full ride. It is to BYU. So, um, you know, that's a religious school. Yeah, for I mean, most I, people. But. Yeah, I'm doubting that BYU <laughs> is just breaking uh, the bank for uh, secular applicants. Well, they actually might be because they, they probably don't have that many. But assuming you don't want to go there, um, the next best option is Iowa, which is 28th. But here's the thing. I, you're talking about addendum. I absolutely do think you should write an addendum. You, you need to keep it extraordinarily short. You need to focus on the facts and what happened. But before we even get there, what about going back to the school? And getting these Fs replaced with pass fail. <laughs> it does happen from time to time, man. I mean, I guess they would be fails, but maybe you can get them withdrawn. Just, hey, hey, look, this is what happened. My mom died and I had to get help. I didn't know how to get help at the time. Please, for the love of God, this is hurting me. Let's do something right for this institution and for me <laughs> and get those grades removed. Because that's you have a 4.0 after that? Clearly, that's going to bump up your. It's the same school. 
you re-enrolled at this school. So is there yeah. any way they could, it, do they have any kind of a rehabilitative anything? Cause can you even mom, retake the classes and then get right. them? I retake the classes and get those F's off your transcript. They have to be off the transcript. And some schools are going to have just like a hard policy well, that, where they will never do this for you, but there might be appeals and you don't really know what appeals there are until you just exhaust all options. But yeah, you, you could increase that 3.3. It sounds like dramatically if you could get those F's off of your transcript. That's, that's the best. Move. That's where I start. Yeah. So you, you want to keep focusing on your LSAT score, which by the way, you should expect yourself to crush. So, so get that high LSAT score and get those grades off your GPA or after off your transcript. If you can't then do the addendum, but that's where I'd start. Yeah. And the addendum is two sentences. My mom died tragically from a brain bleed. That's why I had to drop out of school. Unexpectedly. Yeah. If you recalculate my GPA without that semester, it's a 3.7 or whatever. Now, will they actually take it into account? They'll glance at it if you have a 175. Um, but you know, the fact that they look at it, does that mean, do, do they really give a shit? They're going to have to report whatever your UGPA says on your LSAC transcript or whatever that UGPA is. That's what they're going to have to report to the American Bar Association, to the rankings agencies and to the world. So, you know, like cynically, they don't give a fuck about your mom and her brain bleed. Yeah. They care. Like, what are you doing for them? And yeah. that doesn't do anything for them. So if your LSAT but, will do something for them, then they might yeah. be willing to entertain this. Oh, I see. So we're going to have to report your 3.3, which is really bad for us. But we get to report your 175, which is really good for us. And, and we're uh, not as worried that you're not going to do well here. Right. So that's yeah. the main. But it's the 175 that does it. It's not the addendum yeah. that does it. It's the big LSAT yeah. that does it. Thanks for writing in, Anonymous. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. Yeah.